feels like forever since I've sat down and filmed. I feel like that's how I feel every time, but specifically this time as well. So for a year now, I have been doing a capsule wardrobe, which means, for those of you who do not know, that I have a kind of core cool wardrobe and every season I exchange some pieces in and out. I put obviously some under my bed, I save them for years to come and I try and do seasonal changes that are effective and minimize my wastage. I'll leave some links that explain that in a much better way than I do, but basically I try and minimize how much I buy because I love to shop by kind of having a cyclical, long-standing wardrobe. I personally don't stick to a particular number of pieces, I just try to keep it reasonable. So for me that's basically everything fits on one rail. And so every season I take a look at what I've got and I reorganize it. I get everything out and put it on my bed, which you are gonna see, <laughs> and then I take a look at what I'm definitely including, what I'm not including, again, what's too old, decrepit, beaten up, shrunk in the wash, whatever that I can't use anymore, and then I evaluate what I need to buy as well. Sometimes that will be nothing, sometimes that will be four or five pieces, if that. Sometimes that might be a little bit more. I'm gonna give you a bit of fair warning now. This whole autumn capsule wardrobe is one of those little bit mores. So I'm gonna start with a little review of what I've learned over the year of capsule wardrobing, which hopefully will be useful to some people. Then I'm gonna talk about my kind of overhaul this time around, as in like getting everything out of like under my bed, out of my drawers, out of my wardrobe, organizing everything. And then I'll show you kind of the finished product so far and discuss what I'm going to hopefully purchase. And then I'm gonna talk you through some of the big mistakes I've made this year, which I found, which is gonna be guided by my pile of things I'm giving to the charity shop. It's only about six items, but I figured it would be nice to talk you through that. Also, as you might be able to tell, my voice is gone. It's so annoying. When it goes, it just I just always get laryngitis. So if it goes, it'll go for like a week and a half. Today, I am drinking a cup of coffee with a teaspoon of sugar and some coconut milk. It's very good. There will be another video coming later in the month, I think maybe in a week or so, where I talk you through my capsule wardrobe haul for autumn, so the bits I've picked up, basically. So you have that to look forward to. Okay, let's get started. Let's talk about, like, the experience so far. So in September 2017, I started my capsule wardrobe, which meant getting everything out onto my bed, again, going through everything and realizing what I did have, what I didn't have, etc. I'm one of those people that thinks quite a lot about her purchases but then makes really dumb sporadic purchases i don't i'm not a shopping addict i don't do huge shops or not return things or anything like that but i'm kind of afraid a lot of the time to buy things and then often regret things when i do so i thought you know what i think this system makes way more sense to me and also curbs these sporadic purchases that i make that are stupid as well it's really quite hard to invest in sustainable clothing unless you're at a certain income and at that time i wasn't at a certain income so i thought well the most effective thing i can do is limit how much fast fashion i buy which in my job is really important because we do buy a lot of fast fashion i'm expected to look relatively different in every video i go to a lot of events a lot of evening things i feel like there's a bit of pressure on us to fast fashion and buy a lot. So when I started last year, I just had a mess of a wardrobe. Nothing really went together. I had, I li just lived in this one pair of jeans. I kind of knew what, where I was going with my style, but I didn't have a, a strong idea, a strong direction. So I cleared a lot of things out. I, oh, I had to donate to my sister, actually, this gorgeous like pink fur coat I bought, but like, I. I do not wear a pink fur coat ever. That's so out of my style, like completely out. And like these bright pink shoes and I just had a lot of pink in there that I didn't ever wear because bright pinks and baby pinks are not my thing. Realized also I had no strong basics. So I bought some of those and the capsule wardrobe started. And since then it's been a process of trial and error. And I think this is the first wardrobe where I'm actually starting to have a good sense of what my style is and a good sense of what's worth buying, what's not worth buying maybe, or finding an alternative for, what should be cheap, what should be expensive. So autumn and winter, whilst quite shaky on the ground, were not too bad. Spring, fine, it's basically winter here during spring. Summer, like, what's the word, knocked me for six? <laughs> because I'm not used to dressing for summer. I have always been quite body self-conscious, body conscious and self-conscious, and I find dressing for summer quite difficult so 
I didn't really own any summery clothes at all, let alone things I felt comfortable in. And as you know, if you lived in England, we had a massive heat wave all summer pretty much, or for like at least two months of it. So I had to suddenly purchase a bunch of summery items, things that would get me through things like festivals, days out where I'd be in the sun all day, and that kind of thing. So I now had some summer bits that are quite random, but I quite like. And then we roll back around to autumn. Overall, I'm really enjoying the capsule wardrobe thing. I don't see myself giving up anytime soon, but I think this year's focus is on buying the right kind of things to put back in it. Because there's some things that I bought back in autumn and I'm now giving away, or I bought back in spring and I'm now giving away because I didn't buy the right kind of thing. And I'll explain that more in a sec. So this time around, I went to clear out my wardrobe. I am thinking for this autumn, this is gonna be a mood board right here. I'm really feeling kind of muted neutral colors. I love my black, my white, my monochrome. That's been like the staple of my wardrobe for the past year and pretty much always has been. I love my black, white and gray, various shades, but I want to include more neutrals, more camels, more muted like a mink colors that kind of brown spectrum. And then on top of that, obviously, like everyone else, I love leopard print. I wanted one or two leopard print things in my wardrobe. And something to think about for winter, which I'm not focusing on right now, but if it comes up, I'll get something, is sparkly stuff. I love sparkles. <laughs> I really love things that are a little bit kitsch and a little bit sparkly, but are also fit into this monochrome muted palette. So I've got my eye out for stuff like that, but I'm not necessarily trying to integrate it at this point in time. I think it's a bit early for, for glitter and sparkles. So I emptied everything out, everything. Even stuff I knew was definitely not gonna be put back in the wardrobe this time around. And then I went to work. I put away all of my summer clothes because they're also in kind of random brighter colors because I do wear those, but they're kind of standalone pieces, if that makes any sense. And then we have my beautiful, complete wardrobe. Just a little note, I don't keep my coats or my shoes in there. It's just jumpers, tops, bottoms, and dresses or play suits. This is the first time I've been able to like move my wardrobe around so it actually works for me and I'm so happy with the layout with the shelf at the top. Oh, I just think it's great. I also put away some stuff that was potentially suitable for this season but I kind of want to save and preserve so that they last longer. So there's occasionally stuff that I'll put away like a skirt that could suit this season but I really want it to last six years, not four. So I try and not have it out for two seasons. So let's talk about the things that are going to charity or to friends or family because they aren't quite right and let me explain what happened with them. So I have learned not to buy stretchy bodycon things. You may notice in this gorgeous polo neck dress from Urban Outfitters, I believe, that there is still the tag in it. That's because I never wore it because shockingly enough, I'm not that comfortable in a skin tight bodycon outfit and I needed to remember that. Now I know. This won't be purchased again. <laughs> I optimistically kept it in my wardrobe for a whole year in the hopes that one day I'd wanna wear it on a night out. It was of course like a sporadic random purchase when I was worried about something to wear for an like, evening event. But it's not for me folks. So if anyone's a size 10 and looking for a bodycon dress, let me know. This is a sad one, but this is important. As you may remember, this is a jumper I wore in a get ready with me last year and I wore for pretty much the whole winter. I've learned from this not to buy cheap, cheap knitwear. It's from Zara and it is so worn. It is so bobbly. It's misshapen. It's really itchy around the neck now. And that's because I overwore it basically and it's cheap knitwear. So I've learned from this to not buy really cheap knitwear because it just doesn't have the lasting power. And I'll end up spending exactly as much as I would have on one nice quality item on five bad ones. So as I mentioned before, our summer came all at once and was really hot and intense. So I had to buy a couple of bits that would just get me through those months. So this was one thing I picked up. This is again from Urban Outfitters. It's really nice. I think it's lovely. It's this little cropped silky. Again, it's in this really nice, like I love these muted neutral colors, but I got no wear out of it because I'm self-conscious about my arms, the tops of my arms. I'm never gonna wear strappy tops. So I need to remember the things that I'm happy to push myself with when it comes to body confidence and comfort and the times where it just doesn't necessarily make sense and I should just, you know, leave that piece be. Again, another example of cheap stuff not surviving my wardrobe. I, on the recommendation of my friend Bethan, who gets incredible stuff from there, bought some bits from Yes Style in spring. I bought this shirt. Every time I've washed it, it shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and now it is just 
like half the size it was when I got it and it doesn't suit me anymore like the arms are too tight and it's like kind of too short and I wanted a really loose baggy thing when I bought it so unfortunately this is going to the charity shop it's a shame again I've worn it maybe 10 to 20 times and it just hasn't hasn't gone the distance and the exact same happened to the other yes style shirt that I ordered so Again, I would say if you're on the side of caution, if you are planning to create a capsule wardrobe where you wear a lot of the things like tops that get sweaty multiple times and wash them multiple times, maybe don't get them from those places that are quite cheap. I say that, but some things like t-shirts will last me forever. Like the Brandy Melville t-shirts, I've had them for four or five years. They last forever. This makes me sad, but I need to accept when things don't fit me. This pinafore dress, you may remember, I've worn it loads. I've fought valiantly to make it a part of my wardrobe. And I wear it a lot. It just doesn't fit me. It does not fit over my bum and I wouldn't accept it. I need to size up and I need to accept when I need to size up. Sadly, you are going to the charity shop, but you will be dearly missed. And finally, there is this top here. It is the silky number. Again, it's from Zara. And I bought it on a whim because I actually saw my flatmate Jamaica wearing something similar and I just thought it looked so good. So I just went into Zara and bought it for a night out. You'll notice there's a theme here, <laughs> buying things on a whim. But this pattern and this color are just not me at all. I don't know why I bought it. I don't like this color. I just don't. I think I had this idea in my head that it would go with my Nikes, which are kind of a similar color, but one, it doesn't go with the Nikes. And two, I like them just with a plain outfit. I wouldn't want to add more green. And yeah, obviously it got hardly anywhere. So this will find a new home. I really like very specific patterns and colors. So if I'm gonna invest in something like that, I need to follow guidelines from my Pinterest and my Instagram. Don't go around buying this strange fake Japanese flower print when you're not gonna wear it. So those are my lessons learned from a whole year of capsule wardrobing. I hope you can see why those items are going to charity. Overall, I think I've done all right. That's all I'm giving away in a year's worth of stuff. So that's, I think that's quite good. And for those of you that don't know, charity shops can accept items that they can't resell for, let's say they're not in good enough quality for the charity shop, and they can still donate them to, I think like fabric banks and get money for that. Source is, I used to work in a charity shop. So finally, let's talk about the things I'm hoping to add to my autumn capsule wardrobe for 2018. I have my trusty bullet journal here. Oh, the back's really dirty. So the first thing I noticed is I don't have quite enough tops. And specifically, the things that I'm really comfortable wearing, which are high neck or like polo neck tops, I love those, that are kind of keep you warm, very practical. And then also nice tops. I have mainly t-shirts and plain shirts. I do not have anything that makes me excited to put it on in the morning. And I think I need one or two of those. Second thing is a lighter coat or jacket because at the moment I have my big heavy black one. I also have a big heavier um, nude kind of colored one, which I bought really recently, but I've left in Barcelona. Again, that's quite heavy. It's a big coat. I feel like I need a jacket of some kind or maybe a shorter coat, one that can go on nights out with me and multitask as a lighter jacket. So. Yeah, still stuck on that. That might not happen till winter, but I'd really like something that fills that void. Third thing is a bag that I can use as an everyday smaller bag. So I was using my bright yellow Kankin that's now gone into storage, ready for next year, next summer, because it is bright, bright, bright yellow. <laughs> Maybe like a small backpack, I'm not too sure. Fourth is a pair of really basic, slightly heeled boots. I've wanted these as long as I've had feet. I've never found any that suit my feet, so I think this year I'm gonna continue my quest to find a pair of basic black boots. As you may know, my Doc Martens just don't fit right, and they're so deeply uncomfortable, and I feel like I need like a really neat, nice version of that to wear to like meetings and stuff. So, still on the hunt for those. And then I think this is the fifth or the sixth one. I would like some kind of jumpsuit or boiler suit because I love them. I think they're great and they'd kind of take a nice place of like what you would do like dungarees in the summer. You could do like a boiler suit in the winter. I just think they're really cool. So that's a kind of like just something I want that I think looks nice. I should also add, I've already added one or two things to the wardrobe. They will appear in the capsule wardrobe haul video. So they're kind of already sitting there. So this is just kind of 
the final, final bits if I even need them. So yes, that is my awesome capsule wardrobe review so far. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe if you're not already and like the video as well because I like likes. Thank you. And yeah, and thanks again for watching. I will see you in my next video. Oh, that light went weird.